guys welcome back to my channel i am your friend arman so today in this video we're gonna learn another topic of the law of tort so today's topic is trespass to person okay so under the trespass to person there are certain varieties of tort okay so that we are going to discuss but before i begin please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and do hit the like button and uh, do not forget to share this video so guys and if you have any questions and doubt or any queries regarding my lectures or videos and if you really want to learn about the how to prepare for the some judicial services and all that you can watch my videos uh, you can go to my channel you will find the videos i have uh, given you the details what are the books that you need to refer for for your preparation and all that i have given there so so right now our my series of law of thought is going on so most probably within this week i will finish the law of thought and after that i will begin the uh, assamese paper okay so an important topic of the assamese paper that how you can prepare for that so yeah so without any further delay let's have our the first topic under the trespass to person so that is number one topic is that battery okay number one is battery so what is battery so battery is the thing uh, like it is an application of the force which is intentional to the other person and without lawful justification simple okay uh, application application of force to another person to another person without without lawful justification without lawful justification okay so that is the in, in infliction of the force without lawful justification and the force is intentional okay intentionally if i touch some person you know use the force against a particular person that means i have committed a battery to that person okay so the, in order to constitute the battery okay there are two essentials okay so after like discussing the essential it will be clear to you that what is battery exactly is okay so the essentials are essentials okay so number one essential is that uh, there should be use of force there should be use of force and number two the force the same force the same force should be should be without should be without lawful lawful justification so without lawful justification okay so these are the so these are the two essentials that there should be a use of the force okay there must be a force and this the same force should be uh, without lawful justification okay so suppose if i you know uh, exercise a force to a certain person and i was authorized by the law suppose i am a policeman i was authorized by the law to do that and if i you know intentionally uh, use a force against a certain person so that means i have not committed the tort because i have the you know i have a justify uh, like i have a lawful justification i have a lawful justification for that act okay but i am being a normal person and if i you know exercise a force against a certain another person that means i have committed the tort of battery okay so let's try to understand one by one okay so number one is that there should be a use of force so use of force use of force okay so number one is that use of force so in order to constitute the law or sorry the tort of battery there should be a use of the force that means a one person has to use the force to the another person okay and with an anger or with a 
with you know with with the out of the anger or with the intention of causing harm to another person okay so there should be a use of force okay uh and it is not necessary okay it is not necessary that uh, whether the force is you can say a trivial or a very minute you cannot say that okay no matter whatever the extent it be if even if it is a normal thing or like just by just you can th just let's suppose okay you know throwing uh throwing a glass of water glass of water throwing a glass of water to the someone's face or if he spit a uh, spit to the other another person on their face so that means what that is a that is a um battery okay that is a battery that will constitute a battery because that is you know throwing a glass of water you know so this is a glass of water okay and you you throw it from here okay and there is a person okay there is a person and before the you know the before the water you know touches that person so that is what so before that it is not a battery okay the, but the moment but the moment the water touches the person that so that means what there is a touch so there is a touch and the person you know did that intentionally it did that intentionally so that's why uh, you know uh, th that's why the moment uh, the moment the water touches that person so the so there is a constitution of battery okay so that is a battery okay and it is not necessary like you cannot say that just by throwing a water there is no harm to that person yeah that's correct like just by throwing a water nothing can be n nothing will happen to the other person okay because just a mere water or just say, or you can say that like, i have spitted to the other person and just a spit a mere spit cannot do anything other person no nothing like no harm can cause to that person but still that is a battery okay the moment the thing the force i have you know out of out of anger if i do that you know spit a person spit to the person um, spit out to the another person so that means what that means a battery okay so you can it is not necessary that the other person has to suffer certain injury it is not necessary okay so that's what it is i hope it is clear to you now what is uh, the use of the force so yeah so under the use of force infliction any kind of okay any kind of any kind of infliction infliction any kind of infliction of gas water water heat heat or order order what is my joke okay order etc okay etc which cause which cause uh, injury which cause injury which cause injury or any kind of any kind of what any kind of physical physical discomfort physical discomfort so that is what that will constitute a battery okay so it is one of the essential okay so now we will uh, see another essential the another essential is what another essential is the the same force same force should be for the same force should be without without lawful lawful justification okay without lawful justification okay so there should not be any justified ground for the use of the force that's what it is saying okay
so uh, that means uh, like uh, the force the the excess the, the force which is inflicted that should be that should be intentional okay intentional that should be the for intentional and number two number two without lawful justification okay without lawful justification without lawful justification okay so that should be intentional and without any lawful justification okay so here uh, let's suppose uh, you know a person there is a person a and the person b okay person b okay so there is a very narrow passage let's suppose there is a very narrow passage and a is going from this side and b is also going from this side okay and the moment they reaches here okay you know they touches each other okay they touches each other and say that was very gentle touch okay like i am going like this okay i am going like this and the another person is going also coming here coming from this way so that the the you know, another person touches me i also touches that person so so that mere touch okay the mere touch between us and which is really gentle so that you cannot say that is uh, that that constitute a law uh, sorry battery okay that is not a battery okay but if you know if a does that did one let, let's suppose a did, did what so so in this area only one person can walk like this okay only one person can, can walk if another person come from that side then i have to be like this okay then i have to walk like this okay so that's why like what happened uh, so in that case if i use a force okay if i push that person let's suppose a a push that person b to get away from there and in order to make his way clear he uses the force he throws him away from there so that means the moment he did it that is a battery okay that you you call that we call battery okay so another thing is that another important thing voluntarily suffering okay voluntarily voluntarily suffering voluntarily suffering injury voluntarily suffering injury is no battery okay so uh So yeah, so, the, so without lawful justification, we have we, we know right. But in what are the situation like you can say it is a justifiable. Okay, let's suppose uh, there is a person. Okay, there is a person A who is drowning. He is drowning. He is drowning. Drowning in the river. Okay, let's suppose in the river. Let's suppose in the river. Okay, and he was committing a suicide. Okay, so in order to save him from drowning, and if another person called B, you know, pulls him up, pulls him away from the river, so in that case, A cannot say that that there is a use of the force against me uh, by the B, so that's why he has committed the battery. You cannot say that, like A cannot say that. Okay, or you also can say, uh, like treating, like treating or uh, treating or. Uh, doing operation doing operation or surgery operation or surgery surgery of a of a unconscious man unconscious 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 man by a doctor who is competent to treat that patient so in that case after the recovery after the person become conscious he cannot say or he cannot sue the doctor by saying that it was not like he has like he cannot say that he has committed a battery or a, all that thing he cannot say that okay because so that he, because that those persons has a justifiable ground okay for the infliction of the force okay <coughs> or another another situation like if you forcefully if you forcefully feed a hunger striking prisoner so in that case also the infliction of the force is justifiable all right very simple and and in case of the accident which is purely accident that is also not battery you cannot say that okay suppose i am a uh, suppose i am in the hotel okay i am in the hotel and i was going i went to the hotel for dining okay i am i am in the dining table okay 
so i am in the dining table dining table and what happened a waiter comes up okay wait waiter comes up and suddenly what happened like uh, he you know slipped he slips on the floor and what happened whatever the things he was carrying that fell upon me that fell upon me so that was a purely an accident he did not do it intentionally okay so that is an accident so in that case i cannot sue that waiter that he has committed to battery against me okay so very simple and uh, So there is a very important case law. Uh, case law name is uh, Stanley. Stanley versus Powell. Okay. So in this case, the defendant is a member of the shooting. So, uh, so the defendant uh, is the defendant is the member of member of shooting party okay member of shooting party okay so what happened the moment he you know uh, shoot the gun the moment he shot the gun and that glance the, the bullet uh, the battle the palette of the bullet the palette you know glance from the t that's a tree okay glanced Suppose the defendant is here and he shoot the gun from here and what happened the, and the, the bullet the pallet of the bullet you know uh, glanced off the tree okay you know it glanced off the tree and instead you know the, the point was for the peasant okay the peasant he his his point is peasant he throw the bullet he shot the bullet for to the peasant but what happened the the bullet glanced off the tree and it came to it came and it injured the plaintiff okay it injured the plaintiff so in this case the plaintiff filed a suit against the defendant but the defendant was uh, sorry the plaintiff was not allowed any compensation because it was not intentional and it was a purely an accident so that's why he was not allowed any compensation all right so it is very simple i hope uh, the battery is clear to you now this is all about battery it's not that big topic so yeah i think you have you have understood and could make you clear about it so now uh, we'll discuss another topic <coughs> that is assault okay so number 2 topic for today is assault so assault so what is assault what is assault so you can say uh, assault is just be assault you know occurs just before the battery okay just before the battery the prior act of battery the prior uh, prior act of battery prior act of battery is assault the prior act of battery is assault okay so what is assault so uh, i have given a various example in the while i was teaching telling you about the battery okay so let's take the same example okay or but before that before the example i'll tell you in the very plain simple meaning that assault assault is a uh, assault is an apprehension okay apprehension assault is an apprehension uh, to the plaintiff to the plaintiff plaintiff that that a battery the battery is is about to be inflicted inflicted upon him so uh, assault is an apprehension okay apprehension to the plaintiff that a battery is about to be inflicted upon him okay so this is the plain meaning of the assault okay so what is apprehension apprehension means a fear apprehension means means a fear that like oh my god my might be i'll be beaten by him okay let's suppose the person is you know the person is coming from another way and you know he, he comes this like with a feast and he is supposed to you know hit me but before hitting okay like he was doing this okay like i'll hit you now so so that that is what that is an assault 
but the moment he touch me that will become battery but before touching me so that you know that will create like suppose uh, you know just suppose uh, the person is very you know healthy and muscular guy and he about to hit me okay and he was very and he is in very anger and rage and he wanted to kill you know he wanted to hit me very badly so in that case you know i'll be in the under the fear okay i'll be in the apprehension that oh might be he will beat me so that fear the moment the fear comes to my mind comes to my mind so that th th that person has committed what assault on me okay so that is an assault clear it is very simple it's not that big topic and, and let's take the another example a pointing a uh, pointing a pistol to the another person that is also an assault assault okay suppose like i i and another person is like we are having a very heated argument and like i really wanted to kill that person and that person also wanted to kill me okay like not kill me but uh, you know hit me okay so in that case like sudden i was in a bare hand i i am a bare hand and he's he's in but he suddenly took out the pistol he took out the pistol and pointed at me okay the moment he pointed the pistol at me so that means that creates what that creates what that creates an apprehension to me that might be i'll be killed by that by that gun okay so that is what that is a assault okay now let's take another example that if what if the you know the gun is unloaded still a person is pointed a gun and which is unloaded gun but i have no knowledge that the the gun is unloaded so i have no knowledge still i still i'll be scared i'll be scared is not it so the mo still i am scared so that's why he has committed a tort of assault but if but if i know that the the gun has no bullet gun has no bullet and i am pretending to be scared then in that case i cannot sue that person by saying that he has committed assault on me okay because i know that i was not scared i was not like apprehended all right so this is a assault okay very good i hope it is clear to you now it's a very small topic and uh, so another uh, another important topic that is uh, under the under this trespass to person that is false imprisonment false imprisonment false imprisonment okay so what is false of in false imprisonment so the false imprisonment is a imposition 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 of total restraint remember that not partial okay total restraint total restraint okay imposition of total restraint of some person of someone's liberty on someone's liberty without without lawful justification without lawful justification okay simple the so imposition of the total restraint on some person on someone's liberty without lawful justification okay so that means in order to constitute a restraint there should be a what total restraint okay this is a person he was completely restrained to go beyond this limit okay so he was completely restrained if like there is a way to go for him then you cannot say that is a restraint total that is a total restraint okay like he should be completely restrained from going any limit any way okay so that is what false imprisonment and in order to constitute there should be a total restraint and without lawful justification okay if he is a criminal and he was arrested by the police and detained in the jail so that you cannot say that that is a false imprisonment okay but if a normal person southern you know common person who has not done any wrong and he was restrained in totally totally he was not allowed to go anywhere beyond that limit beyond certain circumscribing limit and that you know detention is not lawful then has no justifiable ground so in that case those kind of restraint is known as false imprisonment okay very simple so uh, there are two essential 
for the false imprisonment the one of first essential is that so total restraint there should be a total total restraint total restraint total restraint and number 2 without lawful justification without lawful justification okay total restraint and without lawful justification so uh, so in to, so in order to constitute the false, false imprisonment there should be a total restraint okay so that means uh, i have already told you that a person should not be allowed person should not be allowed to go beyond certain certain circumscribing limit even if the person is you know detained inside his house inside his, inside his house he was not allowed to go outside the house that is also total restraint okay that is also total restraint simple So uh, the total restraint, okay? Like there is no differentiation uh, under the. So under the criminal law, under the criminal law, what, what is our criminal law? That is IPC, okay? So under the criminal law, there is no differentiation between the total restraint or partial restraint, okay? So both are actionable, okay? As a wrongful confinement wrongful confinement i think you have read it wrongful confinement wrongful confinement okay wrongful con uh, under section 340 okay under section 340 uh, of the ipc a person who has committed the wrongful restraint or say wrongful confinement the person will be punished okay under section 340 of indian penal code okay But under the law of tort, what happened? Under the law of tort, okay. Under the law of tort, total restraint, you can say a total restraint or partial restraint, okay. So under the law of tort, if it is a partial restraint, suppose uh, suppose this person is allowed to go this way, okay, but he was not allowed to go this way, okay. He was not allowed this side, but he was allowed this side, okay. So in that case, that is not a total restraint, okay under the law of tort according to the definition of the law of tort regarding uh, false imprisonment the total restraint what it means it means a complete restraint okay it is it is not like that he was allowed not to go this way only but he was allowed to go this way so that is not a total restraint okay so that's why so if it is not a total restraint a partial restraint only so that will not be counted under the false imprisonment that cannot be said a false imprisonment okay very simple So, in order to constitute false imprisonment, there has to be a total restraint, okay? And uh, and that should be without lawful justification, okay? Very simple, lawful justification, I have already told you. So, yeah, another thing is that the means of escape, okay? So, it is another topic, and same topic, under, under it, you have to mention it, okay? Means of escape. So, means of escape, okay? So when like say when the person when the person who is being restrained totally but he has the option to escape from there okay he has the option to escape from there so let's suppose okay so this is a well okay this is a well here I here a person is kept okay so he cannot go this side this side but there is a ladder let's suppose there is a ladder where he can where he can you know climb and jump out jump away from here okay he, there is a ladder but still he did not opt for it so in that case he has the means of escape but he did not apply it so that's why you cannot say that uh, it is a total restraint okay the person has like if if the person do not have the knowledge of the escape like this is how he can escape from there if he do not have any knowledge about it then he can 
he can file a suit for wrongful sorry false imprisonment okay but if he knew that this way he could escape from here so in that case he will not be allowed to file a sue to sue the defendant okay simple so it is a means of escape so another topic uh, another important thing under this under this topic only that is uh, knowledge of the plaintiff okay knowledge of the plaintiff knowledge of the plaintiff okay knowledge of the plaintiff so whether uh, like the, so whether the knowledge of the plaintiff that he is being restrained is necessary in order to constitute the false imprisonment or not so that's what here it is talking about okay so the knowledge of the plaintiff is not necessary okay is not necessary not necessary not necessary not necessary now okay it's not necessary now but bef like bef there was a case there was a case a uh, name of the hearing hearing versus boil boil hearing versus boil so in this case what happened a school headmaster okay a school headmaster headmaster a school headmaster uh did was not allowing okay was not allowing allowing a student allowing a student to go home to go home uh, before before the payment before the payment of his school fees his school fees school fees and the you know headmaster what he was doing he was forcing his mother forcing his mother forcing the mother of the child the mother the mother forcing the mother of the child to pay the uh, fees of the student okay and that's why the children was not allowed to go to home after the leave of the school okay so in that case the child did not have any idea that he was restrained he has no idea about it so after like when the child got to know and about the things that has happened to him without his knowledge he filed a suit against the headmaster for the uh, false imprisonment but the court held that no since the child did not have any idea about it the child has no idea child has no knowledge about about the wrongful restraint that's why he was not allowed any compensation okay so it was the uh, like it was prior okay this it was the prior rule that the knowledge of the plaintiff is necessary for the for the uh, you know con for the consti to constitute false imprisonment okay knowledge of the plaintiff was necessary but now the situation has changed okay so in the case uh, mirroring versus gramet white m double e r i n g mirroring versus uh, graham 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 white aviation grand white aviation okay so in this case what happened so uh, in this case the court said that the knowledge of the plaintiff is not necessary for the uh, for filing a suit of false imprisonment the it is the court said that it is not necessary it is not necessary it it is not necessary on the part of the plaintiff on the part of the plaintiff to have part of the plaintiff to have to have the idea about the you know false imprisonment okay 
so it is not necessary the court say that not necessary because a person can be detained or can be made under the false imprisonment without the knowledge of the person so that's why the court said that it is not necessary okay that the person should have knowledge okay it is not necessary anymore and this and the court said that it is more logical and that's why the the current rule is that it is not necessary that like the knowledge of the plaintiff is not necessary in order to constitute false imprisonment okay but earlier it was hearing versus boil in that case it was said that it is necessary but in the case of the mirroring versus graham white aviation so in this case the court said that it is not necessary simple okay so uh another thing another same uh, same topic that is uh, unlawful another situation okay unlawful unlawful detention unlawful detention okay so lawful detention are always excusable but unlawful detention are what kind so i'll tell you okay so uh, in the case of rudal shah versus state of bihar yeah state of bihar state of bihar rudal shah versus state of bihar a i r 1968 uh, a i r 1968 so in the case of uh, in the rudal shah versus state of bihar what happened uh, rudal shah rudal shah was released uh, acquitted okay acquitted 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 by the court by the court acquitted by the court on uh, it's not 1968 okay it's 1986 no 83 1983 okay so uh, the acquitted on the 1968 okay he was acquitted by the court in the 1968 okay but he was not released from jail but he was not released he was not released released from jail till 1982 1982 by the police official so he was acquitted by the court in 1968 but still he was kept in the jail till 1982 so he was kept in the jail for 14 years more okay 14 years more okay then the petitioner filed an writ petition of habeas corpus habeas habeas corpus habeas corpus under article what 32 and 226 of the constitution of india okay so so the under article 32 that is supreme court so the defend the plain the you know the plaintiff or the petitioner file a writ petition under article 32 before the supreme court for uh, that is the writ of habeas corpus for his release okay for his release because he was illegally detained unlawful detention for extra 14 years and what happened the defendant contended that there was a contention of the defendant that uh, that he was kept in the jail for the treatment okay treatment treatment since his mental condition mental condition mental condition is not stable mental condition is not stable since his mental condition was not stable that's why he he was kept in jail for the treatment but the court rejected so the court rejected rejected the contention of the defendant and uh, and allowed allowed the plaintiff allowed the plaintiff allowed the plaintiff uh 35000 rupees compensation and 35 rupees 35000 rupees compensation okay so that is the unlawful detention 
okay i hope it is clear to you now that what is a uh, wrongful restraint unlawful restraint means of escape and all these things this it, 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 is, it is one of the important topic under the trespass to person wrongful restraint okay so we have today we have learned about battery we have learned about what number one we have discussed about battery battery number two we have learned assault assault number three we have learned uh, uh, false imprisonment yeah false imprisonment false imprisonment okay so so battery assault and false imprisonment these are the trespass to person okay so we have discussed it okay so in if someone commits battery assault or false imprisonment to you what are the like remedies you have under the law of tort so the now we will see the remedies 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 means what solution so trespass trespass to person for the trespass to person under the law of tort there is a remedies also right you be just i be remedium i think you remember where there is a right there is a remedy so these are the violation of the rights legal right and so there is a remedy okay so what are those remedy number one suit for suit for damages suit for damages simple number one you can file a suit for the damages number two what use of reasonable force use of reasonable force use of reasonable force where you can you know for your safety or say for your release if you can do something if you can do something or if you can apply a reasonable force for your escape for your liberty then you should apply use the reasonable force okay without waiting for the lawful grounds okay legal grounds okay you can use your self defense you can say self defense okay so this is number 2 and number 3 read of habeas corpus habeas corpus under article 226 and 32 of the constitution of india okay so these are the three remedies for the assault battery and uh, false imprisonment clear so tomorrow uh, tomorrow we will discuss trespass to land okay trespass trespass to land land and property we will discuss tomorrow okay so that is the discussion for tomorrow so guys i hope uh, i could make you clear about the topic that is a uh, trespass to person so if you find this video helpful and if this video could you know make you understand this topic then please press the like button and if you haven't subscribed yet and then subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video till the end hope you had a great day ahead thank you thanks a lot